Okay, you young kids will like this one. This is a 1994 Toyota Celica. This is my son's car and it is not starting. So we had zero symptoms, right? We just, he pulled it in the driveway the other night and uh, went to start it the next day and nothing. So the first thing I think would be a good lesson for you young guys out there is how to handle something like this when you're not near say a mechanic like me or you know you're at the mall or whatever and you your car doesn't start there's some some tips that we need to learn first so the first thing when your car doesn't do anything or doesn't make a noise is is your battery dead or is your starter not working and there's a quick way we can do that and that's by turning your headlights on and seeing how bright they are when you crank it. Now, if you're by yourself, you can't use the headlights, so we'll try the dome lights first. So let's go inside, we'll look at the dome lights while you're cranking it. First thing too is this is a standard transmission vehicle, so there's some other considerations here too, but let's start with the dome light. And let me see our headliners missing here, but uh, yeah, it's the first car, it's the way it's supposed to look. Uh, but these, these are pretty dim to begin with here. Um, have they always been that dim? Yeah. They have been? Okay. All right, so go ahead and, and uh, crank it, and we're going to watch this light. I want you to watch the light, too. All right, do that again. See how it's getting a little bit dim? Crank it. Yeah, crank it. I hear your fuel pump turn on when you turn the key. Um, if this was a dead battery, those would have gotten very, very dim and went out. So that'd be the first thing is like, if you ever call me and say, hey dad, my car's not starting, my first te test for you is to do that. Look at your dome lights, crank it, see what they look like. All right, let's, let's do the, the headlights for the viewers to see what those look like. All right, turn your headlights on. And go ahead and crank it. You cranking it? You are? Okay, your headlights are staying very bright. So come on out here now. Turn your headlights off. Well, I guess the other thing too is here, say hi to everyone, Jake. You guys haven't met Jake. Jake is my, my oldest. He'll be 17 in like a month. This is his first car and... Now I'm gonna be famous. Yeah. Scanner <laughs> Danner Jr. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so I want you to look at the headlights. I'm gonna do it so you can see it. Watch the, watch the brightness of the light. All right. Cranking it now. Wait, give me your key. They're, they're in there. Cranking it now. All right, did you see how they stayed bright? Yeah, they didn't change at all. So there's no reason, if you see that, there's no reason to call your friend and say, hey, I need a jump start. It's not a battery problem. Your battery's fine. We have a starter problem. So the next one would be, this being a stick, there's there's a clutch switch we could check, but the next one that everybody needs to learn how to do is the tap test on the starter. That's the one I wanna teach you next. All right, I'm going to try to show you guys on the camera where the starter is. It's gonna be difficult to do both of these, but um, it is actually below the intake manifold. And I might be able to get my hand down in there, let's see. Okay, so this is the body of the starter, and um, what you want to do is tap gently on this housing with something in your car to try to get the starter to vibrate, and a lot of the times it actually works. Where we're going to go from the top is right down through this intake runner. And you can kind of see a, uh, let's see if I can focus on that area. Right down there where you see that uh, metal rod and then that rusty cylinder housing, that is the starter. We want to go between the intake and tap on that while we're cranking it over. All right, so a warning to you guys that, that are going to follow this procedure. You know, this is an emergency situation only. Um, tapping on these starters isn't a great idea because 
well at least hard because there's magnets inside that you can damage and then if it doesn't really need a starter by the time you're done beating on it you're going to need a starter so we try this first if it doesn't work then we pretty much have to call dad okay so that's where we're at um, what we want to do is right down between here Jake I want you to eyeball eyeball this okay, let me see the tire iron I'll point to it this is your starter housing right there okay, okay. Yeah. that's your starter motor um, what you want to do is you're gonna do this about this hard okay while I go inside and hold the key in the crank position so if you were ever stranded and, and you run into a situation like this you could totally look like a hero if you uh, have your friend go in and hold it in the crank position and then you do this is now it, here is it in the same position in every car no every car is different yeah. so <laughs> you, where the starter is yeah that's a good question um the other thing too safety reasons if you get your friend to go in and crank it for you and he doesn't know how to drive a stick and you're in front of the car if it does start you get run over um, so major safety e-brake on you make sure you're in neutral you know before you do something like this okay mm -hmm. are you ready I'm gonna go in and crank it you tap on the starter just repetitively like you were yep okay Hold on. all right I thought you were cranking already tell me when Hold on. okay I'm in the crank position go ahead Harder. 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 Okay. That was a bad idea. What's that? I thought you said you could damage it. You can dam you can damage it if you tap it too hard. But unfortunately that didn't work. So now Jake, we are on the phone and you're like, hey dad, headlights are bright. Um, I didn't need a jump start, car's not cranking, I tapped on the starter, nothing. At this point, without some diagnostic equipment with you, a voltmeter, you're done. So now we're doing some troubleshooting, okay? I'm going to teach you how to do some diagnostics on a starter. I think the next thing would be, I have to show you a wiring diagram next, just so you have an idea of what I'm trying to do. Okay. Alright, come here. It's your first look at a wiring diagram. So we're going to put in your information. This is a program that I bought, man, probably almost 15 years ago. Maybe, well, maybe like 12 years ago. It's like a $5,000 program. Awesome. Yeah, but it's only up to 2004 right now. But I still have the information, so. Well, luckily it's, I, of course, 10 years before. Yeah, yeah. Celica GT, right? ST. You sure? Yep. Positive? Yes. It's an ST? Yeah. The GT was what? Was it turbo or a V6 or no, something? No, the GT, uh, I'm not sure, but I know the GT, like there's a GT like little symbol right there and there wasn't on mine. Okay. It shouldn't matter as long as we have the right engine in here. Here, come back here. So we go wiring diagrams. And for you guys watching this, um, I will post a link for a do it yourself wiring diagram that Mitchell offers that you can buy a month pass for your car for like 15 bucks. So if you need a diagram, this is what you'd need to do. A lot of you guys like the diagrams I use and this is uh, this link that I'm going to put in here. I'll put it in the description too. Anyway, starting charging is where we're going and you're a manual transmission. MT is you. And it's probably, on this year, it's probably a very basic circuit. It looks pretty basic. Not to you. No. <laughs> I've seen crazier though. Or to the rookies. Alright, so what this is is a ground symbol and that means that it's grounded on the housing. So there's no ground wire. There's only two wires we have to check. This one is black and it goes right to the battery. So that means that's got battery voltage to it all the time. And what we say in the field is that's hot all the time. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And then this one is a smaller black wire that would be hot when you crank it. So when you turn the key to the crank position, this is the one where my hand is, that's the one that gets energized that makes that starter do its, do its thing, yeah. okay? Without going into the details inside, this is what does the job, okay? Um, I guess, well, I could, this is a pretty decent diagram. What, what this is doing is making magnetic fields, see the dotted line right here? And then what that does is that pulls this closed and then that lets the high current power go down to the is this motor. Is your key is? No, your key is, that's a good question. Your key is actually way up here in the diagram. There's your key. So you turn the key, you're moving that switch to the start position here, and then you're sending power down this way to an ST fuse, right through that fuse, then through your clutch switch, and then from your clutch switch, it's signaling the engine computer and it's coming down here and it's energizing the starter relay and then the starter relay pulls this switch closed which sends power right there oh. <laughs> so it sounds unnecessary but i'm well, sure it's not yeah it's not all right so there's a, a few different ways we can handle this i think what i'd like to do is go to the starter relay here and uh that's the left side of the engine compartment and do our checks right there or we could go to the clutch switch i mean it wouldn't be a bad idea for us to, and for me to show you this, because if you were stranded somewhere, I would probably have you check the clutch switch, because that's something you could do yourself. There's a two wire switch that's literally on your clutch pedal, like the mechanism that you push, and we need to make sure you didn't bump that, because if you, if you bump this clutch switch, then it will never start. Let's go eyeball that first before we do anything else. Now you're gonna have to get down like with your head underneath there, I'm gonna film you do it and laugh at you. Why? I don't know. There's You're on no... camera. Yeah. So kneel on the driveway with your big old uh, yeah. cuts from wrecking your bike, <laughs> um, and look underneath at your clutch pedal. And right. it wouldn't be like on the pedal, but it would be on the arm of the pedal. Like when you move that pedal, there's a there there's a two wire switch under there. Um, can you see it? No. No? Two, wait, a switch? There's a switch, yeah, you wouldn't even know what that looks like. Not a switch like you'd see on the wall, but it's yeah, like a, it's like right. a, a, um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, you need to... <laughs> it's right here, Jake. Yeah. There's a switch right here. When you push your clutch, it contacts that guy, which... What is that sticking in front of it? That's plugged in. All right, checking that under there isn't going to be fun. So we're gonna check it under the hood, but that's your, that's your clutch switch. I'll let you come down and take a look. Okay, so there's a reason we're not going here, Jake. That sucked getting under there, right? The last thing I wanna do is check voltage here and here. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to go under the hood and we're going to check it at this starter relay. All of our checks are going to be at this starter relay. So just so you know how this works, this one is going to be hot all the time, okay? That pin is hot all the time. When this switch closes, it makes this one have power, all right? When that one has power, that's what's going to make your starter coils make magnetic fields, pulls this closed, and makes power come this way to the starter and crank the engine. Yeah. So that's one of the things we need to check. Is there power on, this is called the load side of the relay. And then this is the- So there's supposed to be power on this one. There's the supposed to be power there all the time. Okay. All right. And then this one will only have power whenever you're cranking and your clutch switch is closed. So that's why your car won't start when you're pushing the, without pushing the clutch in. That guy right there is what closes and sends power that comes from your ignition switch from the start circuit this way down to the clutch switch okay down to here sends power this way at the relay our easiest point here is to check this so let's find that relay starter relay and all it says is what left side of engine compartment let's say i'd probably say that like that's the left side this is the left side very good so what they do is from the driver's perspective this is the left side of the car. If you're driving the car, yeah. this is the left side, okay? So this is gonna be my, my guy where this relay is going to live. 
This is called a underhood fuse relay box. And if they're nice manufacturers, they actually tell you what's what under here, which fortunately for us, they do. See, it says EFI. Yeah, what does that mean? EFI is electronic fuel injection. What's ST? ST is my starter relay. That's the one we want right there. Mm -hmm. And it's right underneath a 50 amp ABS circuit. And so let me get my perspective here. That wind's gonna suck. Okay, they give us uh, the layouts like this. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's a 50 amp, there's a 15 amp EFI fuse. There's my EFI relay. This is my starter relay right here. There we go. Okay, next thing we're about to do is actually very dangerous if we're not careful. And I'm about to energize this thing manually and I need to make sure you're in neutral and your e-brake's on. Wait, well how could it even move forward without me pressing the gas? Because the starter, hold on, I it isn't. What tool? All right, so now there's a ton of different tools we can use. Regular voltmeter, we can use a, a special adapter I have for these to make them work. I'm thinking actually, uh, oh, there's a new tool I have. I'll let you see it. All right, so this is kind of a fancy voltmeter, Jake, and it it actually does some other cool stuff. I can actually- It's like that thing that you stick in your ear at the doctor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. All right. Um, I can measure voltage, right? And can we see that number on that screen? You can see. 12.2. I don't know what kind of glare is on there, though. All right, so anyway, that's what we want to see on two of these pins. I'm just going to do two voltage measurements. And one of them, remember, one of them's hot all the time. So I don't know which one's which. I just check all four. Is there it? Right? Yep. That one's hot. And then okay, let what's, see. here, let me get a better shot of this too. All right, can you see it? Right here. Yeah. And what we're looking at is uh, this guy, and they actually give you the diagram, look. So five, three is the load side, that's the switch. One and two is control. And so five, that's my load side feed. And you can see here that it's got 12.2 volts on it. Okay, um, the other one, three, is the one that needs to close to make this thing work, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's this one. This goes down to the starter motor, right? And what you can actually do with this tool is I can, and this is where we need to be careful, but if I go in the forward direction, I'll send power to the starter. There's 10-4. And what that means is the fact that I'm doing this right now and nothing's happening means everything is good and our problem is down there. And the fact that that's dropping to 10. Well, that kind of sucks for me though. Yeah, this might be a bad starter. Yeah. We may, might beat on it harder. Okay, um, that should have made the starter energized, but let's check the other ones. That's this one and this one. We should have power here when we're cranking it, either on this one or on this one. Now I want you to hold this. Hold it like that, because that's a pretty decent shot for the camera. Here and then here. You can stay right where you are. And I'm going to crank it. I'm going here soon. Okay. Okay. Which one should I put it in right now? It's gonna it be either matter. either this one or this one. We're gonna check them both, okay? Okay. Check it while you're cranking. Yeah, put one in, put it in there now, but don't stuff it in there because we don't want to spread the terminal. And that's actually a decent direction right there. Stay there. I'm going to crank it. Tell me what it does. You mean as far as like voltage wise? Yep. Okay. Tell me if it jumps up to 12 or whatever. Crank it now. Yeah, I got tw uh, 12. All right, letting off the clutch. What did it do? It just dropped back down. I'm pushing the clutch back on. What did it do? Jumped back up. to 12? Yeah. Okay. So what that means. I didn't check the other one yet. We don't have to. The other one is our 
The other one is our relay ground. And so there's actually a way we can check that ground too with this tool. And it's actually showing us a voltage reading. Let's see, we can do it. Um, The little green light on this tool is actually telling you that that's a ground. So that pin is good. It's a nifty little thing. So it's little a starter thing. problem then. It is. Um, our problem's over that way. Um, the other thing that you can do, if you're by yourself, I want you to put your finger on this relay and whenever I crank it, you should feel it clicking, okay? All right. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. Okay. Yep. Alright. Yeah. The other thing here too, Jake, um, is our voltage drop that we were getting was telling me that we had a decent amount of current flow here. Um, this might dictate my next move too. I want to do a current measurement. I'm not familiar enough with the power probe to know. I was reading 10 volts for a reason instead of 12 and I think that's because of current flow this is stuff you have no idea what I'm talking about I'm kind of yep. talking to my viewers here get this relay back out I was hoping for a wiring problem for your sake and mine yeah I actually might have a you don't have to take the engine out to no Okay. But I might have a starter from when we put that used engine in this. Oh yeah, that's what you said. I might have a starter, but it'd be at, at work. Uh, all right, I'm going to have you do this for me. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to smack on the starter again. Do what for you? Just flip this switch. Which is just make sure that it's reading 10, 10, 7, like right. that. Okay. We put your tire iron back, right? I can use this. Yeah. Let's try this again. Tell me when. Shut. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. I can keep it in, right? Yeah. Darn it. I don't want to put a starter in this, Jake. Me either. Freaking stupid old cars. All right, we gotta verify block ground next. Uh, what do I wanna do? Getting under there to that starter is a pain in the butt. All you did was park it, right? Yep. Got home, started it an hour, tried to start it an hour later, wouldn't start. Wouldn't crank. All right. Pause this for a second. Next tool I'm using, and I could have started with this. Just wanted to show you my new Power Pro. Um, this is actually a relay bypass tool. My viewers have seen this a few times. Uh, what this is going to do is go in place of that relay and then I can actually crank it just by hitting a button right uh, but what I want to do the reason I use this is I have a current loop I can measure current flow right here and so that's just going to be with a in this is called an inductive pickup it reads the magnetic field of that wire and then tells me the current flow right where does it tell you that Oh. On another fancy tool that I have. Turn this bad boy on. And we're going to go to our scope. Let's put this so everybody can see it. We're going to go uh, graphing multimeter. Oops. And we'll go lab scope. 
low amp 20. Now we'll go to 60 amp. Low amp 60. And when I hit this button, I don't need to be on 10 milliseconds. Let's speed that up. Let's go like a half a second. When I hit this button, I should see current. See it go down? So my polarity's backwards. So what I do is I flip the jaws of this around because north and south poles, they change with magnetic fields. And what I'm reading is 10, is that 10 amps? Is that amperage set right? Wait, let me make sure I have my scale set right. I'm gonna go back to a 20 amp. I think it was 10 amps. A little bit unfamiliar with the 40 amp setting here. So if I flip this, yeah, that's set on a 10 amp scale. Okay. We have 10 amps going through that starter and I don't hear anything down there. That's not a good thing. Um, but what that means though is my smaller wire on, on the starter, I don't need to check it. It's my larger wire that I have to worry about because we could have a open, and that would be sweet if your heavy cable to your starter was messed up. Like one of these cables on your battery, because they look like crap. Yeah. You know, if it was as simple as one of these guys being loose or corroded, and it absolutely could be. Um, but I have to do a voltage measurement down below, which is going to be difficult to do because I can't even see anything down there. Hand me that red flashlight right there. I was just telling my son if he had to pay someone to do this, Especially for where we are, you know, you're gonna pay an hour diagnostic time and then you're gonna pay to have the starter replaced. He'd be in this job four or five hundred bucks, possibly. Yeah, it's a good thing that you know me. For sure. <laughs> Need to be a mechanic, man. I know. Or at least know how to fix your own stuff. Yeah. Some of this stuff's pretty, pretty complicated. For me at least. Man, I could get you up to speed in a week on this kind of stuff. Seriously. On some basic like starter, alternator, yeah. battery stuff. Okay, one of the things that I do wrong all the time, and I, I've told people the reason I, I do it is I don't want to lose my rings and you know being married to your mother is more important to me. Um, when you're doing electrical work, Having rings on your hands is a bad thing. Hold those for me. Because I could get, not electrocuted, but I could get burned really bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I got my hands down here around this starter that... Have you had that happen before? No, I have not. But I've heard of nightmare stories of people. My old uh, instructor, Dan Svitko, got burned really bad with a wedding band. They had to take it, they had to cut it off with the doctors. It like burned itself into his hand. Oh. All right, I'm gonna have you, you're gonna be my crank guy, okay? And you're going to uh, just flip that switch to the on position for me whenever I tell you. What do we got on the screen? Arrows. Arrows? <laughs> really? I don't know what that means. It's auto scaling, so I'm on the wrong. Oh, I'm on a two volt scale, that's why. Arrows mean it's out of the range, so it would make sense that on a two volt scale that it would give me that. 12.2 volts. Go ahead and hit that. That sucks, Jake. Your starter's bad. Uh, 
So that's the feed, that's the main feed to the starter. You see how it's being maintained? Go ahead, hit it. All right, it's dropping a little bit because we have some current flow. And I might as well, I'll show you guys the, the control circuit. Turn we don't, it back on. Yeah, turn it off. We don't really need to do this part, the control circuit, because the amperage we had said the control circuit was good. We had over 10 amps of current. Uh, let me see if I can find that wire and get a reading off of it. Oh, there you go. Okay, turn that switch off. Turn that switch on. Yeah, those aren't numbers we wanted to see, man. This? Uh, those are good numbers, but the numbers, the reason I'm saying we don't want to see those numbers is your starter is bad. Yeah. And just so you guys can see, flip the switch. That's the control side. I showed you the load side loaded. This is the control side loaded. Last check is going to be the starter ground itself. So I'll leave this switch in the on position. And then the last check is really for me to just take this meter and then just touch it on the starter housing. It would be awesome if we had a bad ground. I would absolutely love it for my sake. What do we got? Nothing. What do we got? Nothing. What's it? 0 0.03? Oh. Yep. Okay. There was 0.12. Hurt. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that ground. So the last thing that we can do, being that we know we need a starter now, is we can beat the crap out of it to see if we can just show it on camera, show the car cranking, you know? Um, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, be right back. And I still have this in the crank position with my tool here. And uh, let's see what we got. couldn't even make it go <sighs> well even if I did Jake it's not yeah, it still needs like to be replaced yeah. you don't want to yeah. send you out on the road nope so how confident are we guys I'm speaking to my audience here this is coming out of dad's pocket or oh, son's pocket yeah, it's my pocket so um, how confident are we? Well, we're confident enough to spend some Danner money. So we need a starter motor. It's surprising the way that this went. You just pulled in the driveway and that was all she wrote. And the only other thing would be that your engine was seized up, but we would have had really, really high amperage uh, Seized up? Like how does that happen? A blown motor, you know, then it won't crank. But you know, our amperage would have been super high in that case. We can do one more amperage measurement. We never did load side, and so I'll grab one last one. Probably should have did that before we started whacking that thing. No, it's fine. <laughs> this will be off of my negative cable. Smells weird. It does. It smells, it smells like your motors. It's the solenoid that's like burnt. Because we're energizing it right now. Like. See, in this setting, a two volt scale would be 200 amps. We got 
nothing. No amperage at all as I'm energizing the starter. So a seized engine is not a possibility either, Jake. Turn your key off. We're done, man. We need to put a starter in it. So we'll get one, get an after shot with a, with a new starter in it. Well, we're filming some of the removal and installation. I should have filmed the whole removal process um, only for the comical aspect of it. Um, so we're, we're going back in. I have not helped him at all yet. He's uh, started the top bolt and now I'm making him get underneath and start the bottom bolt. And, and the reason, Jake, we're not tightening the top bolt yet is you'll never get the bottom bolt in if the, if the top bolt's tight. Yes, I know. I learned that lesson when I put on my tires. Oh, yeah. Dude, I don't remember. Look at the starter housing. Yeah. And then there'll be a, a hole at the very bottom. <clears throat> and that's where it goes. Oh, there it is. I see it. And you might have to have one hand on the starter housing to move it around while you're starting that bolt. This? Wait. Right here? Yeah, possibly. I mean, try putting the bolt in. If it won't go in, you're going to have to move the housing around to, you know, line up the hole. That's hard to get my freaking hand in there. I can't even see what I'm doing. You can do it by feel. That's what I'm going to have to do. Hey. If you were cooler, I did it. you'd be able to do it by feel. Oh, I just did. <laughs> you don't need to see. I can't. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, there's some fur. Really? <laughs> From where you hit that raccoon? Two of them. Oh, man. Did it start? Yeah, I'm in. Like, all the way. Okay, cool. Well then get your um, swivel socket and extension and tighten that bottom bolt first. Is it, did I leave should it be out? Should be on the ground. Here, I'll get it. I'm trying to get you on film. Well, well you know, part of it, it's hard to deal with a flex head ratchet and a wobble socket at the same time. I get that. Remember, you want to keep your angles to a minimum and you want to keep inward pressure with your hand on the end of that ratchet. This is Jake's, uh, he's done some wrenching before, not much. Uh, this is more out of necessity now that it's his car. So he's kind of interested now, which yes. is kind of cool. And you know, I didn't start turning wrenches, Jake, until I had a car either, you know? As soon as I got my first car is when I started wrenching. That looks good. Snug it up nice and tight. Yeah. And don't bust your knuckles, keep your hand open, mm -hmm. okay? And the most torque you can get is when you pull towards you, not push away. So you just kind of configure yourself in a way that... Uh, I just came off every time I do that. Yeah, and then the other trick with those, Jake, is there's a there's an angle of that socket that, that provides you with the best um, grab. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. In other words, the way the swivel is set up, Sometimes it's not as good as others in the way that it's configured as far as the final tightening or loosening. Yeah. Looks like it slipped off again. Okay. We, we can do the final tightening with a wrench too, though. So if you're... Well, I'm already here. Okay. So let's say if and you're... It's pretty tight already. It's part of why it keeps coming. Or I just suck. No. Yes. Can't even get that freaking thing on there. <laughs> Don't worry, I can't see what you're doing, so neither, all I see is part of your face and... My nipple? No, I can't see your nipple. Alright, I think it's tight enough. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll get a wrench on it. Come up here and tighten this top one now. Okay. Oh, not even struggling. How about that? Yes, I am. Keep your angle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did that hurt? No. 
a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Your hand position's better this time. Like keeping this hand here and pushing in and then keeping that down, keep your angle lower. Lower your angle, like with here? this this hand, lower that. Keep your angle of your... I'm just gonna hit my hand even harder. It's pretty tight. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, I like it. All right, let's get our electrical connections underneath now. And by the way, we do have our negative terminal disconnected. <clears throat> because that, that wire that's down there, Jake's hot all the time, so it comes off of this side. As long as nothing's connected to the battery, no danger of anything. And, and there's really no danger of electrocution. With the, that. the danger would be um, in that wire arcing and, you know, getting burned. Yep. All right, get under there. What am I doing? <clears throat> Maybe you'll have to pay me for this automotive work. No way. <laughs> okay, what do you want me to do? All right, so the small one you could plug in. Oh, I, oh this. The two wires? This. Yeah, the smaller one. Do the uh, plug-in one first. I gotta scoot back. Yeah, the black one's the, the plug-in. This one? Yeah. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Um, let me see that harness real quick. Is that? Yeah, it needs to go over there. Is that better? Yes, much better. It was going around that one shift cable. Not very skilled with one. And we picked this car up what, Jake? For what did we get this for? Eight hundred or a thousand? Thousand. Thousand bucks. Yeah. It had a had a blown up engine, and. Uh, what was the mileage? The mileage is high, 200,000, but this was a southern body car. It does have just a little rust, but not the typical Pennsylvania rust. So we we got the car and then we got the engine for like 500, right? And then we put the engine in. I had actually students put the engine in. You're not filming me doing this crap, right? I am. I'm filming what? right now. I'm Dude, talking to the camera. I can't even, and something dropped on my, in my armpit. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. A washer? Yeah, this rubber thing? Oh. Oh, uh, you just knocked that off. Don't worry about that. I'll get that when I come underneath. Okay. Did you plug the black piece in yet? No. Maybe I'm doing it upside down. Yeah, it only goes one way. Yeah. Yeah, this freaking thing. You're going to watch you fight it. No swearing. I don't swear. I've heard him swear. That's not true. Have you? I don't know. No? I know you've heard me swear. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Sometimes working on cars makes you want to swear. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Get in there. Nope. That's not it either. Wish I was. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off. We're gonna let yes. you. Did you get it? Yes. Nice. All right, now get the um, the other one's a bolt on, and there's a washer. Remember, you took a bolt and a washer off, right? Yeah. Um, Wait. Or a nut and a washer. Yeah, it's right. Here. I have a, a different nut, unless that one fits. The one you have, if it fits, then. Should I test it out. Yeah. Put the washer on first. Of course, put the eyelet on, right? The electrical terminal is on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need to set this on the ground. Second. Okay. All right, Jake's finishing this up. The next shot here will be us cranking this engine over. Well, I'm recording you shirtless. That's fine. <laughs> Put that terminal back on. The negative terminal. Are you going to shock me? No, no. <laughs> he doesn't trust me. We were at the, uh, when we were in Ohio, we were doing Man, some. It's shot a spark. So it I just it was it just, I, 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 you don't need to loosen that anymore. You just need to take the terminal and twist it and push down. Huh? Don't mess with that nut anymore at the, just yeah. leave it as it is. No, take that terminal, twist and push the whole thing. Yep. Back and forth. Not, not, yeah. Like back toward me. Yep. Back and forth like that and push down. Keep going, keep going. All right, that's good right there. Now tighten How that up. How does that work? 
It just spreads it apart. Yep, wrench is right there. Jake, you're so manly. And don't Godzilla that one either. Jake says, what's that mean? And I said, making it too tight. Yep. Actually, you probably did. Yeah, no, that's good. All right, so if we did this right, and we still have your, um, we still have your air cleaner off, but, uh, or your, look, in, in my defense, because I'm going to get crap for this, I did not, I did not put this, quote, cold air intake on this car. It came to us like this, and I can't find a factory box. We even bought one off of eBay. It ended up being the wrong one. I shipped it back. So don't give me crap about this cold air intake, which is nothing more than a water intake on this car. Anyway, that's off. Let's, um, do we have everything else back together? I think so. If we did this right, if we diagnosed it properly, the car will start. And if got we got everything back. In. Yes. And if we did not, then I am going to eat crow on camera. Okay. Crank it. Yeah. Am I good to sit in this thing? Yeah, you can sit in it. In fact, if it starts, let it run for a second before you shut it off. It's going to start. I have no doubt. Do you doubt me? Yeah. <laughs> Are you a happy kid now? All right, so um, maybe something else that would have been neat for you guys to see would be, well, I guess it's not totally necessary. I think it would be good for you, and it would be good for some of the other viewers to see it. Um, your key, I need your, um, let's see, for this, do I need your key on for this or not? When we looked at that wiring diagram and the, that one uh, control side, yeah, we do need the die. Or wait, you're talking to yourself. I'm talking to you because you looked at that wiring diagram. But I don't you. know what any of that means. Well, remember there were two feeds we were looking at? Yes. Well, one of them was hot in this crank. Or are you asking which one is? Well, no, I was just thinking out, out loud about, like, do I need the key on to do this test I want to show you? Uh, I, I don't know if I do or not. I thought you did. Right back. Okay, um, with this tool, all right, this is the one that we were using before. I don't know, let's try it without it. Um, I just plugged it in, stay here. Is it on? All right, leave it off, because the car won't start with the key off. So what we were doing before, Jake, is we were taking this tool, all right, so what we were doing before, this bypasses the relay, and what I would ho was hoping for is when we hit this, Right? Now the car's not starting because we don't have your key on, but that's it's part of what we were doing. And you noticed before that that did not work. Right? So that was one, one tool that we used. And then... The other one was this. These are just alternative methods of testing circuitry. Uh, there's so many different ways to do things. And what, what I get from my my subscribers, Jake, all the time is like, what what should I use? What test is best? And like, there isn't a, a best way. There's just multiple ways to do things. I guess it depends on the car. It depends on the car, depends on the system, you know, depends what you're working on. So on this one, again, the load side was pin, right? It was three, five was hot, right? Five, we had 12 volts here. Yes. And I'll put, Put the beeper on for you that's that's a hot feed and then this would be the ground but if i hit the button turn that beeper off right that's pretty cool and that drop that we were seeing that's 10.2 that's just a, a current flow that's causing that voltage drop on this circuit and uh nothing wrong with that so um, what else was I going to tell you? Okay, so if we were doing this before, Jake, and I did this test, and we could make it start, what's that tell you about the starter? Say that again. 
if we this test when we, when we did this before let's say I, I went to this point hit this button and I can make the car start what's that tell us about our starter that's fine starters fine and so what we would do is we backtrack from here back to that clutch switch back toward the ignition switch as our problem mm -hmm. and then you know we would just segment this it along the way test myself, really. no but I mean you're learning though that this is this is what we're doing and Voltage measurements is, is how you troubleshoot a circuit. Our voltage was good out here. Our voltage was good down at the starter. We had a good ground. We were done. We put a starter in it. And that, that would have been, if you would have taken this to a garage, it would have been an hour diagnosis. Um, if I was looking at it, I would have charged the garage 70. The, the garage would have charged you 100. So it would have been 100 bucks for the diagnosis. The starter itself was, well, we paid 94 for the starter. But list price was 140, so garages will mark up the parts. So you're talking 100 for diagnosis, 140 for the storage. So that's 240, and then the labor time for that's probably an hour. So that's another 100 bucks. Yeah. 340 dollars. This would cost you, and it cost us 94. So. And that's why you watch Scanner Dan. <laughs> No, that's why you better start watching. You have your own, <laughs> you have your own car now. It's time to start learning this stuff. Yeah, that's what he has to No, that's your dad. Yeah, that's why you have me as your nah, dad. I won't be that kid. I don't mind. You're out here helping me. That's all I care about. And even if you only absorb 20% of what we were doing, it's better than nothing. And nice job. You did the whole the whole like starter yourself. A lot of it. Well, there's a lot of electrical. Yeah. There's a lot of electrical background, Jake, that you don't know. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm aware. But I could, like I, I said. Wasn't I there could, another? Yeah, it's up there on your, in this twist. Yeah, that way. Put that clamp on first. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Now we gotta change your oil and we gotta fix that CV boot, but I think we'll do the CV boot another day. Made a video of how to change your oil. No, I'm not doing a how to change your oil video. Too simple. Wrong channel for that. Too simple. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Well, it's it's too simple for my viewers. This yes. is not the uh, not this is not the basic channel that I run, you know? But anyway, good job, Jake. Cool. Are you we're, lying? <laughs> we're only filming because um, I think he might get wet with oil and I want to have it on film. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Oh geez. This is hard. Hang on. Dude. Yep. Keep your hands open. I can't from that position. <sighs> if you were a real man. Don't pull. Real don't man. pull. You'll never be able to. From that angle you have to push. <sighs> what the? Maybe reposition your wrench, pull, uh, put it down low. Yeah. Nope, not there. Oh. Way down the other way. This way? Toward the ground. What do you mean? Nope, not there. This, what? Keep going. Keep, that way? Nope. This way? Yep, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep oh. going, keep going, keep going. There you go. And now turn your body so you're facing, no, turn sideways and pull towards you and you'll have way more leverage that way. Yeah. Okay. Accepts. You good? Yeah. Okay. I hurt my thumb though. You all right? Yeah. Well, I'm not wet yet. A lot of this though is like to... angles and positioning. Am I going to be wet? No. Is that loose enough to turn by hand? Probably. Yeah. Okay. So listen, um, your last, wait, stop. Your last thread, <laughs> um, it, it's you're gonna have oil that's gonna go everywhere. So what you wanna do, is you want to um, take the nut, and when you're when you're taking it out, keep pressure inward. So, and you'll feel it when you're on the last thread. You're keeping it in, and then then when you know you're on your last thread, let it go, and then you won't get hardly any oil in your hand. Mm. So listen, when you unthread when you unthread that bolt, right, the last thread, it's going to fall out. Okay, mm -hmm. but if you keep pressure inward like you're pushing it in while you're taking it out it won't fall and that way you'll feel it you'll know you're on the last thread and then you just so then you can let it go instead of being surprised oh. look you're probably gonna get oil all over you are you how oh, well, I'm just gonna, gonna let you do it happen. Okay. Can't happen. 
Oh, there. I'd use your other hand. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's see. That's not too bad. I, you you didn't do too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. All right. Well, that wasn't a, as exciting as I hoped for. Um, but uh, what can I do with this? Right. Set it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now what? I just let it drain. I'll rag. get you a rag. 